So I'm a very smart person, but I want to be wise because a wise individual watches all the smart guys make mistakes and they learn. Now, I know a lot of people correlate success with money, but success doesn't necessarily mean money. It, they, they're becoming more wealthy in their life. If you don't like where you at today, you got yourself there. How can you change it? it? Starts up here. If you change the mindset, that doesn't mean that's all of it. I could think positive all day long, nothing's gonna happen. You have to be conscious about what you're thinking. And one of the ways that you could change those is by reading, associating yourself with other individuals, and really being intentional with it. It changes the conversation. It changes the, the, the mindset. Now you're becoming a go-giver versus a go-getter. Completely different aspect. When I'm coming to you, how can I serve you? I already know by me helping you, by me serving you, by me assisting you in your goals, whether I like it or not, you may not directly help me, but indirectly, if I come genuinely, if you're a decent human being, you're going to return that back. That's our goal. We got to make sure our next generation is better than ours. Because if we don't do that, then you and I wasted our time. We got to make sure our future family strive for success way more than we did. They have to pick up where we left off. In order to do that, they have to be equipped with the tools necessary to do that. This week on American Real, we bring you entrepreneur, financial executive, and Napoleon Hill guru, Fahid Chitsas. Immigrating to the U.S. from Iran at the age of 14, Fahid had a dream for owning his own business. After college, he started and opened an auto repair shop, but in time realized his interest was in financial services and being of service to others. After being introduced to Napoleon Hill and his infamous book, Think and Grow Rich, the Heed took his own thinking and his career to an entirely new level. And speaking of Napoleon Hill, today's episode is brought to you by Audible.com, who is offering a free download for any audiobook, including Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow Rich, along with a 30-day trial to give you the opportunity to check out their service. Visit audibletrial.com forward slash American Real to claim your free offer where you can access 180,000 titles directly from your iPhone, Android, Kindle, or MP3 player. And now, without further ado, I bring to you Mr. Vahid Chitas. This is American Real. I am Roger Brooks. My guest today is Vahid Chitas. Born in Iran and immigrated to the U.S. at the age of 14, you opened your own auto mechanic shop at the age of 19. Wanting more in life, you sold your business and got started in financial services, where you're now an executive field director of one of the nation's top financial marketing companies. You have been married to your beautiful wife, Nargis, who is a practicing attorney, and you just welcome your first daughter, three months young, to the world. You are the founder of Elite Mastermind, connecting influencers and entrepreneurs all over the world on social media platforms, helping individuals to reach their maximum potential in their life. You are a think and grow rich fanatic, 
heavily spreading the works of Dr. Napoleon Hill and other self-development materials. Most influencers know you from the Napoleon Hill page on Instagram. Fahid, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. Well, thank you for hosting. This is a beautiful office, a beautiful studio, and we only met, what, a couple of short weeks ago. Exactly. But I feel like I have a close friend already. Same here. Because I knew the first time we talked. I could hear it in your voice, your sincerity, your openness, and this is how the world works, right? This is how connections happen, relationships are built, and things get done, just like Dr. Napoleon Hill talks about. Exactly. Thank you for being here, Roger, from coming from all the way from New York. We'll welcome you anytime to our office. Our doors are definitely open. We love what you do, and I want to thank you personally for putting out, I know you have 126 videos on YouTube so far. So it's amazing, and those videos are long, but I'm doing my best to little by little just inch away at every single video because you have interviewed some very influential individuals, and I think the younger generation need that. So thank you for, for, for doing that. And I want to thank your wife for allowing you to do this because this is going to change this generation for sure. Oh, I appreciate it. Yeah, and, and obviously we'll have her out here sometime so we'll love we, to we all could meet. So look, let's go back to Iran. I'm fascinated with the Middle East. I don't know why. I feel like I lived there maybe once before, um, but tell us about your childhood. I grew up born in Tehran. My dad was part of the military. My mom had more of the entrepreneurship uh, mentality when we were growing up. My dad used to move around because he was part of the center intelligence back then, spoke English and Arabic fluently, so he used to translate. So when I was four years old, my mom says either we're going to divorce or we're going to go back to my city and we're going to live there. I can't do this traveling thing. So we moved back home to my mom's city and my dad used to go back to work for a month and then be off for a month. So we did that. But one of my uncles got to the United States. He became a physician and that's how our entire family got to U.S. So finally, when I was 13 and a half, um, I got my papers and just got, they put me in the airplane. They're like, you're going. No mom, no dad, sister, stay back and everything else. Because back then it used to be at age 14, you can't leave the country no longer. Okay. You have to wait till you get to 18 to do your two years mandatory army time. So I left right before that and got here, lived with my uncles. Uh, that taught me the hard work, taught me that, you know, you could come from nothing, but you could really go and put energy, effort into it and build something. So I went to middle school, high school, went to UC Riverside. Uh, but if you're Persian, you get three options in life. Either you become a physician or you become an attorney. If they let you off really easy, you become an engineer. Anything else beside that, you're just not going to get invitation to any family gatherings. You're just not part of it. So they look down on you. I mean, you got to be really smart and finish your schooling. Education is a big deal to our community. So I left school and uh, I wanted to be a businessman. So I learned the craft from my uncles, opened my own shop, and I uh, actually cried for three days when I left school because I always wanted to become a physician. That was ingrained in my brain that I need to do that. Um, half of it was for my mom because she sacrificed a lot, sending me to the U.S. and supporting us while we were you know, growing up. The other half was, this is good. You get a lot of credibility. Everybody respects doctors. The minute they go to gatherings and different things. So that's how I started. But um, I opened my own shop. It was very, very successful. But one day, one of my clients introduced me to financial services. And getting introduced to financial services, I got introduced to Dr. Hill, Thinking Grow Rich, the book. So that's how my journey started. And that was over 12, 13 years ago. Wow. So take us back to that day where you broke down and cried for three days. What was going on emotionally? Emotionally, I was feeling that I have let people down because I told them that I was going to become a physician or they assumed with all their power that I was going to become a physician. And when you enroll the entire family into that topic or in that goal that you have, now there's pressure. So I felt that I will probably let a lot of people down. What are they going to think of me, you know? And that, that's what it was. So I broke down. I mean, being young, not knowing how to deal with the emotion, sometimes you need that long time to just let the emotions out and then start from zero. But it's not easy. It's very, very hard. And some people hold on to it for many, many, many years after 
that moment. But I think the, the beautiful thing about me was that I was surrounding myself with a lot of individuals that were much older than myself that had gone to similar situations. So they kind of saw that in my face and they're like, hey, Vahid, don't worry about it. It's going to be okay. I wanted to do this, but not doing it got me to this. So I was like, okay, maybe I'll have a story like that. So that's how it ended up being. Awesome. But it was, it was just mainly me thinking, how am I going to break the news to my mom? Because it would devastate her. Because, you know, all the immigrants, they come to U.S. and they work hard for their children to have that American dream where they could accomplish anything, become a physician, become an attorney, become an engineer, become an entrepreneur, become a business owner, to do something that justifies their sacrifices that they made to get here. So when you say Middle East, I know you love it, but we're very, very hard-headed people. So I don't know why you want to visit the Middle East. <laughs> <laughs> Not the most coachable people. <laughs> so how long after did your parents actually... Ten years later. Okay. Ten years later, my mom, my dad, my sister got here. So your uncles uh, raised you? Yeah, for yeah. A good my uncles your... raised me, and yeah. that's how it was. We don't talk no longer. We don't talk no longer. We have a lot of differences in philosophies. But um, I could tell you, I went through, I was working for them for a dollar an hour. Literally a dollar an hour. And that's how I learned how to survive off of that. So I go back and I look at it, that discipline, that work ethic is already ingrained in me because those were the two people that I had that I could watch and follow. So their characteristics drop off me. But then working hard is not the answer all the time. So you have to work efficient. So now, most of the time, I have to stop myself from working hard every day. I have to get more efficient. So efficiency and hard work, adding your burning desire, that's a powerful combination. That's a cocktail for success. Yeah. So let's talk about Dr. Napoleon Hill. That first time you read the book, did it change your world? When I started reading the book, the, the way it's written, the English language that's written, a lot of the terminology we don't use today. So I had to get the help from dictionary and other individuals saying, what does this mean? What is this word? How do we use this? Can you use it in a sentence? So when I started, I don't think I got beyond the first 20 pages. I think the biggest impact that had me for Dr. Hill's work was the story of Three Feet from Gold. And that, those two pages got me going for like good two years. So I told a lot of people I read the book, but I didn't read the book. I read enough to fuel myself to keep me going for those two years. After that, you know, little by, little by little, we had a book studying, we had this, read it by myself, audible, you know, as much as I could get here and learn. But now it's becoming an obsession where, I mean, this guy definitely went beyond what you and I expect today of someone when it comes to interviewing. Interviewing top 500 successful people, having their recommendation from Carnegie, it just definitely helped. But imagine you interview that many people and you take the entire juice and you put it in a book. But then it's the most sold book, I believe, but it's also the most unread book because a lot of people haven't utilized the principles. So my philosophy is that how do we get Dr. Hill's principles to work for us? So that's something that I want to convey, and I'm getting a lot of entrepreneurs because I don't think I could do it by myself. So I'm getting a lot of entrepreneurs enrolled in this whole entire concept. And that's how I became, you know, that's how I uh, designed Elite Mastermind, where we bring a lot of entrepreneurs. Most of them have mastered one or two principles. So if you collect 50 top entrepreneurs and we just listen to what they have done in their past, you'll get the whole entire thing. But then you don't have to get the whole thing to be successful. You can pick one or two principles and really like a heat sinking missile. You just got to be on it. And uh, for me, it's burning desire. Wow. So do you feel a personal connection to him? The person Definitely. The Definitely. And why is that? Because obviously it, it, a lot it, of people read the book, right, but right, they don't right. go as far or as deep as you have. You know, I'm finding that to be that there's a whole entire community that I was not exposed to, that are fanatic about Dr. Hill's principles. Cult-like. Yeah, it's a, it's a cult. Like, they, they walk, they breathe. I mean, it's crazy. Stars with Bob Proctor. I mean, there's so many people out there, you know, that, that have done that. They utilize the principles, and they've been successful. But here's what I tell you. The language that these individuals use to communicate 
is different than normal individuals that have not read the book. So I could be at a gathering talking to individuals and you'll know he has read it, he's read it, he's starting on it. This guy has no clue what thinking grow rich is. So to me is uh, I do feel a connection. I feel like one of my missions in life is to help a lot of entrepreneurs that were just like me, that would have had a hard time uh, figuring out all these principles because they were not exposed to it. So what if you're successful without the book? What if we add the book to your success? How much more successful will you be? And my, my ideology is that if you're successful, you will be able to help your community. You may not be able to change the world. I don't know if I can change the world or not. That's not my goal. My goal is to change my little community in Los Angeles. If I help these people learn these principles, I'm pretty sure they're going to rub off, off of other individuals that are in the community, and that's how we spread it. So if I can change a few handful of individuals to really know that this book, these principles could help you in your success journey, that could change mountains. And I tell you a story, Roger, what a lot of people may not know, and I want you to feel the effect of it. Dr. Hill's father remarried after Dr. Hill lost the mother. So the stepmother was so monumental in our journey, because we talked about Dr. Hill's philosophies. Imagine this lady changing the entire history and generation of the family because she decided that they're going to move away from the way that they've been living and they're going to start using these principles. So exchanging his pistol gun for a typewriter, just that one act, I'm pretty sure there are thousands of millionaires that could contribute their wealth to Dr. Hill's principles. So a, a simple lady, almost 100 years ago, had that kind of effect. So what kind of a ripple effect you and I could do? If she could do that, then you and I could do it too. And that was just giving somebody a typewriter, a tool that they could utilize for the future. That's incredible. What a great just, story. I mean, just imagine, think about it. So I want to be that instrument that has that domino effect. Hopefully, a lot of other individuals will help me during this process so we could keep the momentum going. But that's, that's what I've been spending about 12 to 15 hours a day. And we got a team uh, of individuals that are helping us with that. And I'm coming across with a lot of cool people, Roger. These individuals are fascinating to me. Every single one of them has got a story. Hopefully, I can introduce you to some of them because their stories are crazy. It inspires us when we give up on our own goals, when we see them not giving up. And that's the key element for success. Seeing somebody else that has done it and be able to replicate that in your own life. So are you applying the book to your financial services? Definitely. Um, I've been able to help a, almost a thousand people get started in financial services. And we had a ritual where on Sundays, I will force them come to the office where we will do the action pack on thinking go rich they they had to if you're around me you're going to know about the book i have personally given out over 1500 copies of my own money just giving out books i stopped giving the books now these days i kind of test them out so when you give out the book for free most of the time they don't read it, it ends up in their car back seat somewhere so but i'm like pushing it i'm forcing it if I almost could make it mandatory, I will make it mandatory for individuals to read it. My daughter is three months old. She's already listening to it. That's awesome. My my wife doesn't know half the time that she's listening, but I'm, <laughs> I'm hiding it. We're doing it. So I'm brainwashing my daughter from this age to have these principles so when she grows up, she doesn't have to look for things. Right. The tools are already there. She just got to apply them. That's awesome. So do you have any success stories of folks that you turned on to the book that you could point to to say, yes, it, or they came up to you and said, this made the difference in my life? Definitely. I've had a few of my own existing agents where, you know, single moms, people, individuals that were not in business. By just having them define what is their why, what did they want out of life, and be, being specific, writing it down. I want a million dollars by December 2020. I will accumulate it based on this, this, this. I am willing to give this in order to receive this. Just the act of them writing it down, they're becoming more successful. Now, 
I know a lot of people correlate success with money, but success doesn't necessarily mean money. It, they, they're becoming more wealthy in their life where they're able to parent their children better. They're able to communicate with their husband, boyfriend, all of these different people that are around them in a much better manner. And they know if they don't make the million dollars, it wasn't anybody else's fault. If they were stopping themselves from becoming successful. And if you go back and reread the book, it, it just resonates. It tells you that, hey, if you do this, this, it's systematically breaking down all your goals and be able to achieve those. And I love that you talked about writing and writing it down, the act of doing that, putting it out there. Talk about your own experiences. How have you done that and how has that impacted your life? That's an awesome question. The first time that I wrote my affirmation and writing down my goals and plans, I didn't know how to write it. And people around me didn't write it. They just copied somebody else. So I spent almost three months in just figuring out what I wanted to write. And what I figured out for myself, based on Dr. Hill's philosophies, I did it in two sheets of paper. So the front sheet says what I want, what I want to accomplish within the next two, three years. And I list them. I want this many people on social media. I want this channel. I want this. This is how much directors I want in my financial services. This is how many people are going to duplicate me. This is every, how many offices do I want to open? Where are the locations? How many vacations do I want to go to? How much do I want to add to my saving? All of that. But that's not the important part. The important part is what I put on the back. It's how am I going to achieve those? If I want to add another $100,000 to my saving account, what do I need to do? So this is what I need. And one of the things, one of the unique things that I put in there that I should go to the office every day. And I made that commitment to myself that I will show up. Most of the time, you will find me in the office on Sundays because I wrote down on that sheet of paper, I am willing, I am true. It's not a sacrifice, it's a choice. I made the logical, rational choice for me to spend that time half day in the office, work on my future, so when that future comes, I will be able to spend it with my family without worrying about the income. And during that process, I have impacted a lot of individuals' lives where they get started in financial services and they don't have to stay in financial services. But by them being associated with me, they will automatically become more successful because now at least they know the principles. Now what they do with it, that's a choice they need to make. No, and I'm so glad you talked about page one and page two, because I think most people just do page one. Right. Not how's it going to happen. Right. So that's that's great advice. Just like, in, imagine, just like on Instagram. I want a lot of influencers to be able to do interview with us and talk about that. It's contact game. You either pick up the phone or you send a message. How many are you going to do every day? How many accounts are you going to utilize? When they contact you, how are you going to respond? What are the messages? It's like you breaking down your goal and systematically going after it and under no circumstances should you ever think about giving up ever 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 never 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 should you think about giving up will there be some delays and challenges definitely i mean think about it your luggage didn't get there on time you forgot your tie you forgot your shirt but we're still doing this interview you don't give up and you still do it so pushing through you need to build a mental toughness you need to stop caring what other people think of you. And at the same time, you should care. But most of the time, what they think of you, it's none of your business. Yeah. You should just leave it alone, continue. As long as you're not violating anybody's right. As long as you know this is the right thing. I believe my goal is to interview 500 people in 2019. That was my goal. And we're going to do that. My goal is to have 100 uh, you know, in influencers where we could invite at a gathering where a brand new individual like myself 20 years ago could come to that event and be like, wow, this is cool. This is the crowd I want to be part of, right? I want to change my friends by choice. I want to hang around instead of five people, let me hang around 100. I want to have over a million followers just on our fan page. Why? Because I know we'll be able to influence their lives for better. That's awesome. You had a lot of gems right there, and I want to break down a couple of them if we can. So sure. number one, you're not doing this alone. You have a great team. How important Definitely. is team? Oof. Um, team and mastermind is probably the two biggest questions that I get all the time on our channel is, what is a mastermind? What is teamwork? Uh, there's a lot of similarities between that. 
but your team is the people that are doing the, the grunt work. They're just, it's, it's a contact. You're getting punches in the face. You're getting no's. You're getting people rejecting you. They're like, who are you? What is your agenda? What are you doing? That's teamwork. And the closer you get, the more skinship you do with the team, the better it becomes. What do I mean? You got to get to know them. Who are they? What ticks them? What are, why are they doing it? What is their why? What do they want to get out of it? So you got to do that. And that's not an easy thing to do. If you're working with five, ten individuals, it's hard. It takes a lot of effort to get to know each person on your team. And most of the time, you don't know if they're going to stay on your, on your team for a long period or not. So I could be spending five, ten hours every week trying to get to know you, and you could be gone in a month, two months. So I just completely throw that time away. But it is necessary for us to achieve the next level because now you're building that culture. So that's teamwork. It's going to work every single day without complaining. Like, we know there's going to be setbacks, but we're pushing through because our goal is it's so big, our vision is so big that the little turbulences, little potholes in between, it don't make any difference. We do need to get, reach the destination. Now, mastermind is something else. Mastermind is bouncing off ideas off of other individuals that could potentially have done it before you or you value their opinion because they have presented their success story already. They are legit. If they tell you that this is what they think, is not just an opinion. It's an opinion that's got a lot of weight to it. So that's mastermind. So I think mastermind and teamwork it's fantastic. Um, you got to utilize it. You and I are going to do a lot of masterminding, bouncing off ideas. What do you think of this, Roger? What do you think of that? And that could be a two-minute, three-minute phone conversation. So when I'm calling you, I'm not calling you to waste your time. I know your time is valuable. I'm calling you. And then you're going to be able to do the you know, same thing in return. But I tell you what's the most unique thing about teamwork and mastermind. Most of them will start a conversation with, what can I do for you? How can I serve you? So when that becomes a culture, watch out. That organization is going to go straight to the top. No competition. Awesome. No, and I'm glad you just brought that up. Being of service, how important is it to start with service? It's very important. It changes the conversation. It changes the, the, the mindset. Now you're becoming a go-giver versus a go-getter. Completely different aspect. When I'm coming to you, how can I serve you? I already know by me helping you, by me serving you, by me assisting you in your goals, whether I like it or not, you may not directly help me, but indirectly, if I come genuinely, if you're a decent human being, you're going to return that back. Yeah. And then that becomes a culture. So if I know you're a person that loves to serve, I'm going to connect you with other my buddies that like to serve. You're going to serve them. They're going to serve. So it becomes a culture where everybody's helping each other. And it's never, Roger, about who makes more money than you or not. A transaction that I might help you might make you $100,000. A transaction that you might help me might make me a million dollars. It's never about the money. It's that you got my back, I got your back, and we have an understanding that we started by giving. I know if I give time to your channel, you're going to give time to my channel. Now, I don't expect it the next day. So it's, a, it's money in the bank. I'm building equity within you, with you. And for our audience and other people that we're going to be definitely serving. So one of my goals is to be able to serve a lot of different individuals. And sometimes it doesn't work out. Nothing wrong with that. Sometimes the feelings are not mutual. mutual. The paths are not mutual. Sometimes we disagree not to, I mean, we just go our own path. You do your own thing. And that's totally fine. At the end of the day, we're all human. We don't have to always make the right choices. Sometimes our choices are wrong. And we just got to live with that. But... Majority of individuals that have read the book, Thinking Go Rich, I love it. Yeah. it. They're on the same wavelength. The mindset is definitely there. And that started with everybody from the Napoleon Hill Foundation. I've gotten to know a lot of them that worked with the foundation. I've worked, uh, I've, I'm in communication with the Institute. I love what those people are doing, helping a lot of people spread the word of Dr. Hill. And that's it. If you are spreading Dr. Hill's work, I am your friend. I want to be your friend. I'm going to help you no matter what. Because we have the same outcome. That's awesome. Uh, you talked about coming in on Sundays and that consistency in your, attaining your goals, right? Those little wins every single day, every single week. How important is consistency in any business? Oh, it is so crucial. 
having that discipline built into you, everybody will have discipline if the money was good. If I give you $1,000 every single day, you'll come to work every day. So I'm disciplining you with money. But how do you get the discipline without the money? That's where you got to do your storyboard. You got to do your vision board. You got to write it down. You got to meditate on it. You got to visualize it. Bounce it off of other people. And you got to have that craziness a little bit in you to be able to do that. To me, I figured if someone goes to the gym on a daily basis, I'm going to go to my gym. My gym is my business. Love that. So that, that, that's what, it, to me, it just came. Sundays is no different than Monday because sun comes up, sun goes down. It's just a label that you and I give it. We call today Monday and we call this Sunday. But everything else in the universe does the same thing that they did the day before. So to me, it just made sense. That doesn't mean I take away time from my family and I'm not aware of it. I am aware of that. But my cause is bigger than just my own family because I'm able to help other people's families. If I perform and I do what I'm supposed to be doing and I put the discipline behind it, it will help thousands of families, not just my own family. And that's sometimes hard. That's sometimes hard. You got to enroll your husband, your wife, your boyfriend, your girlfriend, all of these individuals. You got to enroll them in your vision and what you're trying to do. And that's why I believe you choosing your life partner is very, very important. So I have a beautiful wife. She supports me through thin and thick. She's been monumental to my growth. She's the logical side. She, she always looks at, I am positive all the time, and I refuse to look at the downside, the negative side. But her being an attorney, she's always looking at the negative side. What if this goes wrong? What if that doesn't happen? What if, so I'm, you know, whenever I go home, I'm like, today I had a rough day. So let's just be positive. Don't tell me about things that could go wrong, because I'm already aware of it. Don't add to it. Let's just, today, just let's be positive. Yesterday, we got our Instagram account banned. Uh, somebody hacked into it. We don't know if it went offline for almost 24 hours. I went home and I said, today is not the day. Like, I'm not having a good day. Let, let's just tomorrow. Let me know what else you think, right? So that's what it is. But you need to have that support system. To me, your house is your safe environment where you could get naked and nobody's going to judge you. And that support system is very, very important. And... I have had that with my mom, but I didn't have that for my dad. My mom is always positive. Let's just go get it done. As long as you wear a suit and tie to the office, you look professional, I'm going to support you. Let's go do it. That was it. But my dad, what if this business doesn't make it? Why did you sell your old business? What if this doesn't happen? What if it's this? What if it's that? All of the negative things that could go on. So I've always had the, the but I chose the positive side over the negative. I know things are not going to go right all the time. But I chose the part. It felt more right. And I want to be associated with that. So I always, I got my work ethic from my mom and my, my mom's family side. I got my IQ side maybe from my dad's side. But I'm combining with, you know, associating myself with a lot of successful older people than myself. And when I mean older, I'm talking about age and maturity, right? I want to be associated. I don't want to make the same mistakes they did. So I'm a very smart person, but I want to be wise. Because a wise individual watches all the smart guys make mistakes and they learn. So I want to be a wise person. So I'm having an inner fight constantly, try to go that direction. So that's that's been a journey. It's it's fun. It's fun. And Roger, one of the things that's very, very important is that you always have to say thank you to those individuals that helped you throughout the journey. I walked away from many, many different companies and institutions, but I always thank the individual that got me started. You gotta, you gotta remember where you come from. So that's very, very important. And I believe uh, we're gonna be able to have a lot of success stories out by our fan page on Instagram. And I think we're closing the gap where we're bringing the awareness to Dr. Hill's principles. Yeah, and I wanna talk about that in a moment, but first I have to ask you about your energy. You have an infectious energy Thank you. about you, and is that? Are you conscious of that, or is it just? Is that been your personality? I'm, I'm just since? excited. Yeah, I I, I want to live for life. Exactly, I want to live. I want to give back to other people. That's why I don't. I, I probably don't understand depression. My wife tried to explain to me what that is. I don't understand that because I don't have that state. I refuse to think that life is only the negative side. I choose the positive side, and why not get excited about life? We're gonna live only one time. 
I wanted people to remember that I was excited. I'm, I don't have to be the most intelligent, the most efficient guy. I make a lot of mistakes on on daily basis. My team that's sitting here today could tell you that. I make a lot of mistakes. But I want to do it with excitement, with enthusiasm. When you do it like that, it just puts a little flavor into it. Yeah. And I'm Persian, so it's probably in my DNA. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think we're a lot alike in the, this way. Um, you, you strike me as someone who doesn't like to hear someone say, I'm bored, right? Would that bother you? Oh, would definitely bother me. Yeah. Definitely. If you're bored, that means you're not actively going after what you love. And what Dr. Hill talks about is you got to find that burning desire. And sometimes I was talking to, to, to Coach Jeff here, and, and I said, it took me three years to find that burning desire, to cultivate it, give it enough fuel, you know, put energy behind it. But once that fire is going, that thing could last centuries because now you're going in with intention, you're conscious about it, you see, you see the effect of it on other people. So sometimes I'm not excited, but I force myself to be excited, then I'm excited for the next couple of days. So you just gotta be conscious about it and be able to change your, 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 your individual inner. You gotta talk to yourself. You gotta have that conversation with yourself inside, which a lot of entrepreneurs do have. I have negative thoughts, but I have come to learn how to make those distances between me being negative and converting it to the positiveness, I, I'm closing the gap. So now I would say I got it down to like four or five seconds where the negative thought comes, it comes from one side, I let it go. I don't keep it in between. Because if you keep it in your mind and your head, yeah. it may not serve you. Let's talk about this Napoleon Hill page. This love it, love it. So first of all, what gave you the idea to start it and then how has this grown so quickly it started in 2014 when i got barely started on instagram didn't do anything with the page so i just registered that's all i did i said this will be cool i'm learning about stuff let me share my notes with other people and i got busy with my business so it was just sitting there so one day i come back and i'm like let me see what's going on with the page we had 13,000 followers with like eight posts and the last post was like two years old. And I'm like, why are these crazy people following this page? So I brought it back to my team. I'm like, we're talking about it. We're doing it. Why don't we really put some effort into it? So we started doing it. And uh, I am so grateful for all the influencers, a lot of different individuals that have come behind our page. And they're shouting it out. They're letting other people know. Uh, it's, it's amazing. It's been growing very, very fast and is attracting a lot of individuals that will be able to serve the community. It's purely a fan page. We're sharing our experience on how we utilize Dr. Hill's principles in real life in 2019. Not something that I did 10 years ago. How am I applying it today? So it's very practical. I like to stay practical. Anybody could read a book, Roger, but that doesn't mean they're gonna apply it. And if you want something to stay secret, you put it in a book. Right. Because most people won't read it. So this book is just amazing. Almost coming to a century and it's still relevant till today. Yeah. This is 20 years of someone's livelihood going into it. And this is something that we need to spread. I think personally, if I'm ever elected to any official position within the city of state, I'm going to make it mandatory for people to read it in high school if i can make it elementary school this should be part of the school curriculum if it is it will probably close the gap of individuals wanting and thinking about what they want to do and actual doing so they don't teach this stuff in school it's unfortunate let's talk about this a little bit uh we become what we think about constantly you have to be conscious about what you're thinking and one of the ways that you could change those is by reading, associating yourself with other individuals, and really being intentional with it. If you don't like where you are today, you got yourself there. How can you change it? it? Starts up here. If you change the mindset, that doesn't mean that's all of it. I could think positive all day long, nothing's gonna happen. I could have the best auto suggestion, I could have the best affirmation, but if I don't go after it, nothing is gonna happen. So to me, if you were to ask me what I think the secret would be out of the book, I think is action. And one part of that action is mindset. So mindset has to do with your thoughts. 
If you change your thoughts, you change your results. If you want different results, don't change the action. Change the thoughts first. The action will follow. It's very, very simple. Yet, that's exactly why a lot of people don't do it. Because it's simple to do. It's easy to do. But you got to, you know, you got you to work for it. No doubt. And I think that's just what I was going to say. The reality is a lot of people don't like to take action. They talk about it. They say they're going to do it. But they never do it. Exactly. Or they start and they stop. That's why I got my second page. In order for me that's to right. achieve the first page, what am I willing to give? Yes. Willingness. What am I giving? I'm giving, uh, uh, I don't watch news. I do watch TV. I watch a lot of documentaries. I watch a lot of YouTube. I watch a lot of influencers that give talks. I just don't watch the news. Maybe two to three times per year, if in case there's a disaster that I need to know for the livelihood of my family, there's a fire going on. I turn on the channel, find out where it is, and that's it. Other than that, I'm not watching any of it. Doesn't matter, right side, left side, doesn't matter. I don't want to watch it. Because negative thoughts, once they come in, it starts cultivating other negative thoughts. And that's, it's got that cycle. So I just cut that out. So that's why it's very, very, you got to put effort into it. And if you are where you are today, and you know by just watching two of us, just giving this talk, I'm giving you the secret. Dr. Hill, give you the secret. Change your thoughts, change your pattern. Yeah. And then the results will change. And if you don't like that, you got yourself there, you could change it. But he tell us about what's happening next. Um, I believe you're going to be starting some some courses and some online classes. What's going on with that? I'm enrolling a lot of different coaches that have mastered specific principles from Dr. Hill. Because I, it's very hard to master all of the principles. You need to know all of them in totality to be able to use it in your business, all that. You need to be conscious about it. But I believe there are certain individuals that have really fine-tuned a specific um, principle. So what I'm doing is I'm enrolling them in Elite Mastermind, and we, we are working on different courses that we're going to be, where if you're just like myself, you didn't know how to write your affirmation, there is a course about that. You go in there, this is the, the, the person that's authority for writing your affirmation. payments. They're go there's going to be a PDF right there. There's an action part. You're going to be able to go through it, and by the time you're done, it's going to be short, but to the point. But they have access to it to go back and forth and review it and be able to and be add to it, subtract to it, and all that. But to me, it's how can we be practical about it? Not in just a philosophy, just how can we use these principles on your daily basis? And also another thing that's very, very important is that sometimes we need to communicate with somebody else to see if we're on the right path or not. How do we course correct? How do we align if we're on the right path or wrong path? So having access to coaches where you could drop in a note, hey, by the way, this part didn't work. What do you think? Or you need one hour of coaching one-on-one, -on -one, fix that challenge that you're having, with, knock it out of part, go make a lot of money. So to me, that's practicality of it. So we're introducing a lot of people to our fan page, and then obviously we'll have the courses where people could take. Um, you could kind of think about it as, as Dr. Hill's uh, little school that you could possibly think of, where you get these principles. We will be collaborating with a lot of different individuals. We haven't finalized it yet, but that's my vision. That's where I see it goes, because I think that's something that would be able to help me 12 years ago when I started reading Dr. Hill's work. So I recommend to people they should be reading 30 minutes of Dr. Hill daily basis. It keeps poverty away. What keeps you up at night? My wife, my daughter, it's changed my life completely. But um, I always worry that I'm not doing enough. So I strive to do more. Um, I, am, I am working on acclimating my body to only need five hours of sleep. Because I think the work that I want to do it requires a lot of my time. So it's difficult. I love eight hours of sleeping. I love to sleep in on Sundays. But I also know that could be my downfall. That, that, that's a bad habit that could just... The habit is just standing right there, the bad habits. They're just inching away to just get in. So it's me having that fight with it every single day, not to let it come in. But um, I have a lot of work to do, Roger. And I got to do it in this lifetime. So I got to work. No, I'm so glad you talked about that because um, I don't think we're here to be comfortable. I don't think we're here to sleep eight hours a night. We don't have time. 
I can't. I, 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 I just don't physically think it will be possible because I'm used to not getting the eight right, hours. Right. So when I do get the eight hours, I might get worried. But think about this, you know, especially us in America, we're so, I guess, spoiled in a way and, and, and feel entitled to constant comfort. You can't get anything done if you have constant comfort. So again, it's great that you brought that up. Five hours of sleep, I think it's awesome. You'll be able to survive. Yeah. You'll be able to survive. You have to be comfortable being uncomfortable because all your goals, all your biggest vision that you have happens when you're uncomfortable. You have to be able to be able to do that. Now, that doesn't mean you cannot build in a support system where things get a little bit crazy, where you could just, you know, in life, if you want to go 10 steps forward, sometimes you do need to come one or two steps. But that means you got eight steps in. So creating that safe zone where you could retreat back to, recuperate, regain momentum, and then go back, launch again. Where that's exactly what I did past eight months in financial services, I pretty much shut everything down, Roger. I said, we're going to social media. I have a goal and this is the goal. So if I need to put some stuff on hold, that means income, that means passive income, that means a lot of different things. I was very clear with individuals that this is the path we're going. It's either you're on or you're not. Either way, we still love you, but this is the path that we need to go. If I'm gonna go impact a lot of people's livelihood, which is over a million people just on our fan page. I like to put a number to so we could strive for that goal, right? If I'm gonna go impact, then I do need to step a couple of step backs, re relearn. You know, these young kids, I mean, I envy them. They learn these technologies. It took me a month, Roger, to figure out all these different options just on Instagram. It will take me another month or two to learn everything on Facebook, all of these different social media where we, you and I could connect much faster at a higher speed. So. That's what I'm working on. I might be slow, but I'm going to outperform everybody else because when you're chilling, when you're taking it easy, you better know. I'm working. I'm working. On Sundays, you take your kids, you take your family out, you need to know. Vahidi's contacting influencers on Instagram. We're doing more videos. I'm building a momentum for my week. And at some point, obviously, financially, I wouldn't need to do it anymore. And that's, that's what troubles a lot of people, Roger. I get a lot of people contact me on Instagram. They're like, how are you funding this? Or what are you, what are you gonna sell? How do you make money? And I'm like, the point wasn't money. We're just doing it because we love it. We will do it for free. Obviously money helps a lot of stuff, funds it, gets things to go, gets you the right team, right ads, right materials. But I mean, imagine, would you still do this if you weren't getting paid? Of course, I Done. do. We don't do Same feeling. Absolutely. Same feeling. That's the key. And those are the powerful people. Those are the people that are crazy enough to sure. think that they could change the world. And those are the actual people that do. Right. So as long as you don't give up on your goals and your dreams, as long as you do not throw the towel in, you will become successful. You just got to hang in there. Even though sometimes I wanted to, throw, I have thrown the towel in momentarily in my journey, but I was able to go pick it back up before anybody realized that I gave up, but I'm like, now what? I give up on my dream. I, how am I gonna look my daughter in the eyes and say, I give up on it because it was tough. I want, I want my daughter, I don't want her role model to be Spider-Man, Superman, all of these artificial characters that be created in our society. I want her to look up to me. I want her to look up to her mother, saying my dad is a tough dude. He's in business getting punches every day and he's surviving the ring. He might be bloodied up, but he's gonna get back up after falling 50 different times, 50 different directions. I want her to look up to me and be just like me. So if I can give her some of that tough skinness, ooh, and all of this knowledge compressed and give her the juice, make sure she maneuvers through her life with strategically knowing things might come up, how to handle them, that's our goal. We gotta make sure our next generation is better than ours. Because if we don't do that, then you and I wasted our time. We gotta make sure our future family strive for success way more than we did. They have to pick up where we left off. In order to do that, they have to be equipped with the tools necessary to do that. I can't spoil my kid because then she will not be equipped to carry on my legacy. 
If I want her to do that, then I need to set the right example for her. And I don't need to set the example for thousands of people. I just need to set the example for one individual. And that individual will be able to impact millions of individuals. But I love what you're doing, Raj. I love it. If there is any way that I can help you to your cause, to your mission, I'm game. Just no, let me know what you need. Thank you. The feeling is mutual, and we will definitely do things together. I did want to touch real quick on partnerships and the importance of partnerships, because as we're going to do, and people will start to see, partnership in action. How I help you, how you help me, and, and that's the way it should be, right? But we, I wasn't always like that, Roger. No, and I was just going to say the that. More, Either the, was I. The older right? that I get, I am more yes. sharing. Sure. I am more open. I don't hide things. Yes. I tell you my connections. I tell you the stuff that I'm doing because that would just help you. That's it. Simple as that. And I would like to be able to receive that from other individuals. So how could I want that from other people to give me when I'm not giving it? So I should be the role model. I should set the example right there. So I'm, I'm an open book. My, con my Rolodex is your Rolodex. Yeah. You tell me what you need. That's so important today. And I've talked to many guests about this is, you know, when I grew up and, you know, the first 20 years of my career, I was very, you know, stingy about my contacts, about my knowledge, about my intellectual property. You know, it was mine. With American Real, that all changed. Now I'm open. And when you open yourself up, things, magic happens. Magic happens. Yeah. So that's you just putting that. that in the universe and universe will bring in the right people that will support your cause. Yeah. The minute I started growing on Instagram, started going viral, individuals showed up that I would have never thought that they will be even open to collaborating. They've been so helpful. You know, I mean, I feel like I'm blessed. I feel like God is looking out for me. And the only reason I made it so far is because I had God in mind all the time. I keep very, very strong faith. And if you're in business, you're going to be able to become a winner. You have to have your faith together. And I don't mean religion. You got to have your faith together if you want to be successful. And I've had that. My faith is strong enough that I believe and I know that individuals are going to come to my aid because my cause is not just mine. It will benefit them, their community, their family, and it will potentially benefit their income too. It's, there's a monetary reward for us doing the right thing. Well, look, this has been great. You have been fabulous. Uh, I'm not going to close this out because we're going to talk again. Definitely. We we'll love that. And I'm going to keep this open. We're going to see how you grow. I cannot wait to see you go after your goals and attain your goals. And we're going to stay connected. But Vahid, thank you so much for coming on the show. Welcome to the American Real family. And let's do some great things together. Thank you so much for coming, flying from New York, having your son over here. We definitely, we're looking forward to do more. And in any shape or form that we can help, me and my team is completely open. You let us know. You cover the other side of Mississippi, we'll cover <laughs> this great. side of Mississippi. <laughs> so if you need any contacts on this side, let us know. Thank you and so much. And the feeling is mutual. I appreciate Likewise. it. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thanks for tuning into American Real. Be sure to visit our website, AmericanReal.tv, or search for us on iTunes or YouTube for past episodes. While you're there, please rate us or leave us a review, as that helps others find our show. I am truly grateful and appreciate all of your support. At American Real, we're on a mission to help as many people around the world fulfill their dreams and obtain their goals. If you'd like to be part of our inner circle or want one-on-one -on -one coaching, check out the American Real Learning Academy we have self-help groups and courses so you can build the best you. We also have a new Facebook group where you can connect with high achievers from around the world. If you want to go even further, maybe you're determined to write your own book or launch your own podcast, contact me today to see if we can help. You can reach me through Instagram or Facebook or email me directly at roger at americanreal.tv. And speaking of podcasting, our next course will be starting soon. So, if you're interested in launching your own podcast, join me and podcast your passion. I'll take you through my eight-week course where I'll mentor you to build a world-class podcast. I'm only taking on a small group of people who want to share their passion through broadcasting, where I'll have you up on iTunes and YouTube within weeks so you can podcast your passion. Click on the link below for more information. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you 
next week. <laughs>